11 and a half threads per inch. What in the fuck? The easiest way to make this would have been just to do it out of stock, but I don't have any stock the right size and I didn't really want to waste this. This is my last piece this size. So I was curious of if I could cast this with just dirt. I don't have sand and I don't want to go get sand because I'm probably never going to do something like this again. All I did was go outside and dig in the dirt with a stick and, and then add a little bit of water and just mix it up till it felt like it was about right. I mixed it a little bit too wet, so I tried to get some of it to evaporate on the burner. After turning this down on the lathe, it turned out a little bit too thin to cut threads in. So what I should have done probably was wrap some tape around this to build up the diameter before I put it in the dirt. Or just came around and lightly cleaned this up and widened it out a little bit and then blew the dust out. Lesson learned. But we can fix it with the TIG welder. It double tracked. Wrong diameter, oh well. Okay, cutting the threads in the big lathe. My main gripe about this big lathe is the jog, the spindle jog is going in reverse, so you can't use it to go real slow to cut threads like this, where you don't have a deep gutter to stop in. There's no, there's very little margin for error. So I'm just doing it by hand, just pulling the chuck around with the tool. Sure, it'd cut a lot smoother if it had some speed behind it, but I don't want to blow out the part in the bottom. Smarter to use the round end and not this end in case you're you know cranking away and you accidentally loosen up the part while you're threading it. Yeah, 
even though that knurling didn't turn out the prettiest, I actually kind of like it. It's, it grips surprisingly good. It grips and feels better than those big ones. I don't know if it's because they fit in your fingerprints more or what. Those threads didn't turn out all that great, but it's a face seal, so it doesn't really matter. With a little gasket in there. And it's only going to be put on this once and stay on it. I forgot to mention earlier that I took this little bump off so it would pull out of the dirt smooth. I'm kind of curious how this one works versus this one. This one's got a taper in it. The whole sort's big and goes in real nice and smooth. Whereas this one's just a straight shot through. They shoot pretty much the exact same length. I'm surprised this one I made did as good as it did with just winging it, no designing. So the way mine goes through is just a straight rough drill bit cut. And the way theirs goes through, it comes down bigger diameter and does a taper. And then it straightens out at the end. Like, you can see where I marked it. From here out is a straight shot. And I thought, I thought this would have started flaring out pretty nasty, but from the video I took, it seems like this spray pattern stays together a little bit better than this one. I don't know if it's because they put this chamfer on it, so the water comes out and tries to follow that, you know, from frictional forces and pull out and fan out a little bit more, but... Versus just that straight shot with a very small deburr on top. But anyways, I don't know, sorry if I'm boring you, but I thought that was kind of interesting. That's not even what I'm making this for. Screwed that up, working too close behind the camera, trying to pay attention to make sure I had a good shot. And I'm not fully sure if I need to braze or weld this to make it seal, but I think what I'm going to do is just try looping it up and pressing it on so it doesn't gall up and see if that makes a steel. Pretty soft stuff. Okay, so on the other end of this hose, I want to put in this fan spray nozzle from McMaster Car. And it's a eighth inch NPT tapered thread. And at the thickest part, it's about 0.62.
Put it back in vertical so I can see what I'm doing a little better here. Uh-oh. We're stuck. I don't want to torque on that too hard and tear it. It'd probably be nice to get a little bit bigger diameter for more thread engagement, but I don't want to push my luck. We'll see how this does. As thin as this stuff is, I really don't want to try cutting threads in it because it might make it too thin and more prone to cracking. So I'm going to try to form them just by running in this little stainless eighth inch pipe plug. Tricky thing about doing this though is going to be to get it to be nice and straight in without making a special tool for it. We'll see how it goes. You guys are probably going to see me screw this up even better than I do because the camera's so close. It's working out all right. A little bit of Teflon tape. Gray Scotch Bright to clean up the finish. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something or at least found it entertaining. I'll leave links in the description below for what I used in this video. And then like to clamp the two while I was working with it, I used these little clamps that came with the AN flaring tool set to do AN fitting lines, single flares, like it does double two. One thing to note about this bender is when you come in to start your bend, if you don't pre-bend it by hand first, this will kink it. It'll put a dent in it. Watch, I'll show you. See how it puts that kink in it? So what you have to do, We'll do it on the opposite side here. You need to make sure to remember to start your bend by hand first to get it down out of the way before you engage this. It still puts a little bit of a kink in it, but not nearly as bad versus this old cheap one that I've had forever. See, when you slide this down, it doesn't mar the surface. There's enough clearance. You don't get that dent mark. So yeah, I prefer this one. The one good thing about this one though is you can do full 180 degree bends, whereas this one you can't. So I don't know, if you need this, I'd recommend you go in here and open this open this notch up on this face a little bit so it doesn't bind in as bad.